Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Before we get into the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe. A lot of things going on at the moment and there is a lot of content available here on MarkRomanWeather.com on YouTube. Of course, we have seen the tie for the warmest September in recorded history for the UK. And of course, that ties 2006 records dating back to 1884. No matter what way you cut it, cut it no matter what way you look at it, Whatever side of the fence you, you're sitting on with regards to climate change, there is no getting away from the fact that September was an outstandingly mild month across the British Isles. Where this may lead to down the road remains open to question. Uh, we'll look at the um, second update of the winter 2023-24 ideas that I'm, I'm now starting to build more and more. So we will look at that this upcoming work week. So plenty of things to... Uh, whet your appetite with regards to winter and what may come with that of course we also have the global weather and climate report that was issued yesterday evening also and uh, so do check that out if you haven't already done so this is an interesting tweet by our friend Shrine Bruin September 2023 was equal with 2006 for the warmest for uh, September on record for the British Isles here and you can see the reds indicating an incredible anomaly compared to average upwards of two and a half degrees above average covering the majority of England and Wales, which is pretty remarkably it goes on to also say that the mean maximum was equal to 1895 for the warmest on record. The mean minimum was below 2006. So there was warmer nights in 2006 compared to 2023, but the second warmest on record. Also an interesting one, September was warmer than July for the first time since 1895 i believe on the uk record so a very interesting i love shrine's stats he's a terrific stats guy and i greatly appreciate the content that he shares on the uh, on twitter if you haven't already done so be sure to follow shrine on twitter now we have got a lot of things going on at the moment we are going to see some unusually warm temperatures towards the end of this week we're also going to see upwards of 100 to 200 millimetres of rain across the north and western portions of the British Isles. That area of high pressure signalled, um, you know, on the channel here, the Manjulian Oscillation progressing through the Pacific now is helping shift that area of high pressure over the continent westwards. And we're going to see a lot of wet weather running around the top of that high through the course of this work week. But current temperatures are quite the stark contrast, actually, a very, very warm start to the month of October. I think uh, Spain and Andorra has seen the, the hottest temperatures nationally on record for the month of uh, October, I believe, thir over 38 Celsius. And um, um, I think El Grande, I think, was the region. Look at the contrast in temperatures across the continent. So we're starting to see a little bit of wintry uh, conditions across the far north of Europe. But down at the bottom, down in the southwest, we're seeing temperatures in the 30s in France, the mid to high 30s in Spain and Portugal. And right here in the UK, we've got some warmth across the southeastern corner of the British Isles here. This is a look at the UK and Ireland current temperatures. So relatively fresh across the north. And we can see here that we've got some warmth across the southeast corner, 20, 21, 22 Celsius, as you can see here. But look at the, the contrast here. Once you get across the, con uh, the channel, um, we've got 24, 25, 26, even 27 Celsius. Quite a big contrast, actually, between the north coast of France and the southeast coast of the UK, which is quite interesting. Ireland, mid-teens, mid generally speaking, along with Scotland, the majority of Scotland, seeing uh, mid-teens for temperatures, of course. This is the current visible infrared, sorry, infrared satellite image. A lot of activity as you can see here the tropics and the mid tropics you've got plenty of uh, of storm activity at the moment here so the, the tropics are still quite active at the moment here can we actually pull up the national hurricane center page and see what it's shown with regards to with regards to just bear with me we seem to see what we've actually got going in the tropics at the moment um let's see here we've got philippe uh, still in the northern leeward islands at the moment here 50 mile per hour tropical storm and it looks as if according to the track it will um, head northwards and um, actually becoming a hurricane to the east of bermuda which is quite interesting here but there's no other invest areas at the moment 
apart from Tropical Storm uh, Philippe um, at the moment here. So let's have a quick look and see what's going on with regards to the pattern as we go forward here. If we look back actually at the visible uh, infrared satellite image, you can actually see, um, just bear with me a second. So you can actually see in the infrared image here, the area of high pressure, high and dry across the bulk of Europe, really the Southwest and South of Europe here, quite cloud free at the moment. You can see this frontal system drip across the British Isles at the moment here. Uh, some heavy rainfall through Ireland and Northern Ireland. And we are going to see quite a lot of rain over the next uh, day or so across England and Wales here. If we look at this uh, rainfall prediction um, forecast chart here off the Met Office, you can see here the forecast precipitation area of low pressure developing along that boundary. So we're going to see some fairly heavy rainfall through much of Wales, the southwest, and also through the Midlands up into Manchester, across the Leeds, the Humber estuary. Looks if we've got some fairly heavy rainfall expected here. Area of low pressure across the north, higher pressure across the south. We've got a fairly tight isobar field at the moment here. So we're going to see some pretty strong winds out of the west. We've seen that, of course, through the course of the day. And we're going to see a rash of shower activity expecting across the northern half of the British Isles. So you can see here this area of low pressure kind of develops uh, through the evening and overnight tonight. Some heavy rainfall that will move across Denmark and the southern portion of Sweden. You can see here the high pressure starting to strengthen to the south and southwest of the British Isles here. And we're going to see systems running around the top of that area of high pressure and bringing quite a lot of rainfall across parts of northwest Ireland, northern Ireland, central Scotland through the course of Tuesday night and into Wednesday. Notice that area of low pressure now become quite strong over the Baltic region here. So we could see some very windy conditions in the, along the southern flank of this low. And also notice here high elevation snow across parts of Norway um, as the moisture runs around the top of that high. But you can see here as we play through the course of this week here, more systems one after the other lining up. We may get a bit of a conveyor starting to develop. If we actually pan out to the bigger view here, um, you can see that we've got um, a bit of a conveyor belt of moisture developing here. We'll play it through the loop. That area of high pressure becomes quite established across the southern half of the UK, keeping things fairly dry here. England, Wales, very wet across the central swathe of Scotland uh, over the next few days here. But you notice here, this conga line of moisture extends from the deep tropics right the way around the top of that area of high pressure. And we're going to see some very heavy, persistent rainfall upslope areas of Scotland, even northwest England. We could see some very significant amounts of rain. You see here that the, the connection here between the tropics and the nor northwest UK is quite significant as we press towards the end of the week here. And this is also going to see warmer air starting to lift northwards here. You notice here, as that area of high pressure shifts a little bit to the east, we've got that area of low pressure quite far south over the North Atlantic. That allows some of that warm transport of heat out of the southwest uh, up into the British Isles here. And you can see, as we look at the 850 chart here, we do have some fairly significant warm air coming northwards here. So this is the GFS chart. Remember, it didn't show a particular northward extent of warmth across the UK compared to what the ECMWF did. Notice here that the, the GFS is now indicating some of that um, 15 Celsius isotherm extending even in Scotland here. So very significant warmth towards the end of the week. But look what comes after that here. This is towards next Wednesday, the 11th of October. Quite the big swing between very warmer coming up from the south and colder air, actually Arctic air, seen by the GFS, long way out, that will probably change, so we don't take this literal, but notice the area of low pressure over the Norwegian Sea, draw, dragging in some very cold air off Greenland. Of course, we've got very warm sea surface temperatures at the moment. That probably allowed the UK to see its a tie for the record warm September, really. I think uh, you know there's no there's no denying that, that the water temperatures have made a big difference. But look at this here: some very cold air at eight fifty, um, coming down from the north here. I think that actually may be the minus 
what is it, the minus 5 Celsius isotherm here, but look at it over Central and Eastern Europe. As that cold comes south, we've got that um, eastward shift of the warmest air that will initially make, make inroads across the UK and Ireland, and then it gets kicked out of the way here. Cold front, probably quite a notable cold front, actually sweeping this way east across the, the UK here. So quite the big swing seen by the GFS, very warmer towards the end of the week. But during next week, we may have a taste of real autumn conditions here, something we really haven't seen in quite some time here. Finally, looking at the total uh, accumulated precipitation uh, through the next several days here. You can see here quite dry across southeastern portions of Europe here, quite wet across Siberia and France even. Southeast UK, uh, quite interesting. This is, of course, up to Saturday the 14th of October. Let's have a look and see actually what it's shown with regards to the UK in terms of the amount of precipitation uh, total um, as we go forward here. So this is up to the 16th of October. Some very significant amounts. We've even got nearly 100 millimetres, by the way, down across the southeast of the UK in this chart as well. Looking at Scotland specifically and see exactly what we're looking at in terms of the precipitation. Um, quite interesting. I, I think we could see two, 300 millimetres of rain, but by the way, up until the... Um, mid portion of October. Now remember we've had a very wet uh, July, slightly less so in August, very wet September um, and also it looks as if October is going to be quite wet as well. So it looks as if we're shaping up quite well in terms of moisture, quite a lot of wet conditions compared to average across the bulk of the UK as we go uh, through the next week to two weeks here. So it looks as if the total precipitation, 237 millimetres of rain expected across the west quite a notable contrast look at this here over aberdeenshire we've only got 23 24 mil compared to further west very much driven by the the mountains of course this is an orographic uh, situation here where you've got quite a significant element of rain shadow taking place and that's a very interesting chart isn't it with regards to the extremity of rainfall in the west versus the east so quite interesting stuff. We'll look at um, the longer term uh, temperature anomaly, precipitation anomaly, probably in tomorrow's video. And, you know, as said, later on in the week, we'll look at the winter as well. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.